Okay, so what we've done, we modified the software. First of all, so we've got more control over the PWM by making it work through an interrupt. Uh, it's a bit bright that I've got the KPS here. Yeah, so we've got an interrupt here, timer interrupt. You just put a counter in it, and then when the counter hits a certain level, it resets. But we also have a value set to switch it from um, something on it again, isn't it? Uh, so. uh, we've got something there, what it does instead of just blindly setting it, what we do is when we're doing it all right, we just set the level at which we want it to actually switch from marks to space and then in here when the where is it down here when the counter gets to a certain level um, it then switches from mark to sp uh, from space to mark actually uh -huh. but because we've got it that way we can change it by using the data direction so we can make it into an input switch it from output to input and then here set the output to high so it switches between a high output and an input. Okay, now if we go back to the circuit. So here you see, if it's an input it's floating, but because we've got these two resistors in there that actually pulls it down to the ground, right? So a high output will pull it to the five volts, and then if it becomes an input it basically comes to the ground. In other words it will work the same way, and it does. switching that the output on the PWM between being high, being high output and an input you see now the LED lights because I've actually got the LED I originally had the LED between there and the high side but the thing is of course when it goes to an input it actually makes it conduct provide power and it just turns it on <laughs> so I've put it between there and the low side and so obviously it goes bright this is a low side switching. Yeah, it works. Still exactly the same, which means that's the. the um, that's the low side switching of a trinary setup. <laughs>